You may be seated. Thank you to all of the representatives of the applicants, the Human Rights Commission of RIMA, and the representatives of the state of RIMA for your, your arguments. We have deliberated, and my brothers, and sister will now give you an overview of our thoughts on the presentations or the submissions by the applicants and respondents. I'm going to start with my, my brother on the far right. Thank you very much, Madam President. <clears throat> Actually, I have a lot of comments for you applicants and respondents. But of course, given the shortage of time, I will simply summarize them. And uh, having actually been privileged to sit uh, in the actual bench of the African court, <laughs> I would like to assure you, all of you, applicants, respondents, that uh, uh, from what we have seen here, your arguments, the way uh, you demonstrated uh, your knowledge of the legal principles, the facts, uh, you are not very different from the actual councils that appear before the African Court on Human People's Rights in actual, real cases. So you are all fit to appear before the actual African Court. And uh, that's what uh, I should assure you. And of course, that tells you a lot of things. That tells you about your strength, your skills that you have demonstrated. And uh, I think you should consider in the future life taking up cases to the African court. Thank you very much. Thank you, my brother. I'm now going to ask my sister Lorenz, all the way from France, to give us, Prof, please give us your, your thoughts. Thank you so much, dear President. Chers étudiants, chers... Dear students, I am going to give you some general remarks as a professor, a university professor. I was absolutely fascinated and full of admiration to have listened to each of your submissions of your the capacities that you really handled with ease and the art of speaking and because a lawyer first of all is somebody who manages or handles the law knows the law but must also be persuasive must be able to convince and you were all able with certain degrees of variations but generally speaking you were absolutely impressive 
I say this with a lot of sincerity, I was profoundly impressed by your performances. And I believe that the work that you carried out throughout this year and also in this past week where you worked on your arguments, where you met and exchanged your capacity to work collectively together in a multilingual um, context will make of you certainly future legal people, advocates. My colleague and friend has just mentioned that there is not much that you should be envious about for, or you shouldn't be envying the current advocates. And in fact, I support what he has just said. And I really wish for you to have fantastic careers because I see that you are defending uh, human rights with passion and we all need it today, irrespective of where we find ourselves in the world. So I recommend you, I in fact wish you an excellent future. I am completely convinced. I do believe that you will have a fantastic future ahead where you will continue to work because of course the performance that you uh, showed us today is the fruit of certainly for some of you would have been a, a natural skill but perhaps to be able to fine-tune these uh, uh, skills you also need to work hard and it's very evident that you really worked hard and if there's something that we should remember for the others who are in this room is that there is no secret only work only work can enable you to grow and to improve yourselves from day to day and this is what you showed us today you are hard workers you are passionate about human rights and right so Oh, having participated at a number of uh, uh, um, mood court competitions, whether it's in America or in Europe, and uh, also now in, um, facilitated by the University of Pretoria here in Africa, I must say, really, I have to say that I am in awe of the capacities and skills of the young, qualified people in Africa. Students, please continue to work hard and carry it out with passion. Thank you. Sister Justice Lorenz spoken like a true law professor. <laughs> I'm going to have my brother Justice Robert Nanema, who you know in his other capacity as a committee member of the African Committee of Experts on Children. Thank you. Thank you, Judge President, and a very good morning once again. I think it's afternoon now to all of you, including our participants. You put up a very great fight, uh, but what I should say is you were very eloquent. You pushed your argument to the limits. Even when we asked the questions, you were all composed and you all answered them. And I think that's a great plus, uh, not only to you as individuals, but to the center. It shows how much uh, the mood has evolved and how it speaks volumes to the fact that you're able to appreciate legal concepts and link them to the facts that you have. And I think that's very great. From my position as a person coming from the committee, there are particular aspects that I was looking out for. And I'm glad to say that to a great extent, they all came across. I looked out for the fact that we are looking at the added value that the committee brings towards the protection of the child. And that came through your arguments on age, your arguments on marriage. And I think that was very great. I looked out on your engagement of uh, jurisprudence from the committee, uh, use of the African Charter, use of general comments. And that is something that also came through. About justiciability of rights, you looked across rights from the generous, from the entire spectrum, not only civil and political rights, but also economic rights. And also, um, you also engaged the due diligence principle. You showed where the government had fallen short. You showed where things could be improved. You also showed where you hoped that uh, some things could still be tied up here and there. And I think from my perspective as a member of the committee, you have done a lot in uh, speaking volumes to the work we do, and it's great that we are seeing this come through. 
So thank you very much uh, for the effort you put in. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers for putting up yet another fantastic mood. Thank you. So thank you, my dear brother, and our last set of comments is going to come from Justice Solomon Deso, who in, in his other capacity is Dr. Solomon Deso, chairperson of the African Commission. Thank you very much, uh, Judge President. Um, I join my uh, colleagues, uh, members of the bench, in congratulating each of the uh, council uh, for the applicant as well as for the respondent state. Uh, I feel that uh, the future of our continent is in very good hands uh, and with your uh, skills, uh, fighting spirit and eloquence, um, I would say that um, we would have even uh, a much more um, robust uh, legal minds than we have had so far. Uh, so that is um, at a general point. In terms of, I, I would like to speak in terms of form as well as substance. I think in terms of form, uh, I would speak to, for example, uh, how you present yourself. I think that's extremely important, introducing yourself uh, and uh, what you represent, um, and then uh, going to the issues that you are going to speak to. Um, and the other aspect of which, uh, in terms of form, has to do with um, your attentiveness to questions that are asked and how you also uh, um, compose yourself when you get interrupted, when questions asked, and then how quickly you get back to um, you know, you, you, the flow of your presentation and argument. I think uh, all of these are extremely, extremely uh, important things. And um, despite the variation, uh, the individual variations uh, from council to council, you, all of you have uh, demonstrated the capacity to do, uh, to fulfill these things. Some of you uh, went straight into substance without self-introducing yourself and so on. I think uh, I understand the weight of the engagement is weighing heavily on your uh, mind, uh, but I think these are some of the issues in terms of form. I think that uh, I thought uh, were very excellent and would help moving forward uh, in terms of your career as well. Uh, substantively speaking, your presentation uh, arguments uh, have demonstrated one thing. First, the, the case is such that it actually requires you to make reference to uh, a wide area of human rights uh, relating to children's rights, relating to uh, women rights, uh, relating to rights generally, um, let's say in, in the African Charter, for example. Uh, it also required you to engage uh, the jurisprudence of uh, not, the, not just the uh, main uh, human rights bodies, but also others as well. Obviously, uh, on a number of issues, there is a, always a possibility for room for improvement. Uh, but overall, once again, in that respect as well, uh, your presentation showed uh, the scope of research that you have undertaken and the breadth of uh, legal uh, materials that you have covered. Um, the use of legal authority, extremely important. Uh, in, I think uh, not just from your presentation, I think what impressed me the most is your reliance on relevant legal authority when questions are asked 
and also not just reliance on relevant legal authority, but also in attempting to show why and how that applies to the specific subject matter that we are interrogating. I think I thought that was also uh, extremely uh, excellent. Uh, so I feel extremely uh, honored that I have been made part of this uh, process uh, to witness uh, this excellent knowledge and skill in display. So thank you very much, really. Thank you to Justice Tessa, otherwise known as Chairperson of the African Commission. And thank you to the colleagues. Mine is just to concur with all of the comments that have been made by my colleagues. The quality of your presentations has been amazing. In South Africa today is Heritage Day. <clears throat> and to celebrate Heritage Day on a day when we are listening to Africa's brightest young minds is a huge privilege. It says to me that we have among you the leaders that can teach young people out there that there's hope in human rights instruments that there's a lot of goodness that can be mined from these human rights instruments to educate and to motivate African governments, including ours, to transform those spaces where we feel that there isn't enough respect for human rights. I found generally the thrust of your arguments were clear, concise, compelling, accurate, professional, and highly persuasive. If there are things that need to be improved, it is when you cite cases, make sure that you give us a little bit of context of that case. There's just sometimes some of you cited a case with the presumption that the judge has read that case and you know what was the context and therefore why is that case relevant here. But sometimes it's not always the case. But also we must remember that when these are recorded, they're not just recorded for the judges, they're recorded as educational material for your peers and for society in general. But secondly, as somebody of course who teaches on social justice and who is on a course as part of this university and as part of the Tumor Foundation to put social justice at the center of society and at the center of all global conversations, I would like in future that you place equal, equal enjoyment of all rights and freedoms at the core of these arguments. That yes, it is about human rights, but ultimately the ultimate test is, is the standard that the government is putting forth a standard that will ensure that there's equal enjoyment of all rights and freedoms by all regardless of diversity. In this case, for example, when the government says we need a balancing, a balancing of what with who? Will the, that gender reassigned couple be placed where it can enjoy equal enjoyment of all rights and freedoms? Will poor be placed on equal enjoyment of all rights and freedoms. And linked to that is that 
I do think that when we deal with human rights, we tend to look at the rights of the child and gender-based violence, and we tend to put them in boxes. And I think Edward de Bono says that's our cross as lawyers. We tend, sorry, we tend to think in boxes. I would like a little bit of integration of an intersectional lens because Mpo is not just a child, she is a girl child, which brings the issue of intersectionality. And in some of these matters, you'll find that it's not just an intersection of age and um, gender and also um, gender assignment, reassignment, and um, sexual preferences, which you pointed out, there's also a class issue. When we're saying you can exhaust internal remedies, we have to bring in a poverty lens there and say, can everybody exhaust those internal remedies if those internal remedies have not been adjusted to access to justice for all and not just some. But having said all of that, for me, it was the greatest way of spending Heritage Day. You truly are the leaders we've been waiting for. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues, honorable justices of the bench. I don't know if you, you haven't returned to your, to your ordinary roles yet, so I'm going to still address you as such. Um, it is a tad bit uh, intimidating to stand up after all of this amazingness has gone on for hours. Uh, I can't help but to just want to say Congratulations to all of you, each and every one of you that stood up this morning and defended and argued a case that is so close to me. I spent a lot of time thinking about this case and it was just really, really, really amazing to listen to you this morning. So thank you so much. From a, from a personal perspective, it was, it was deeply appreciated. Um, we will, as, as Prof. Yoon indicated, um, has indicated on a number of occasions, we will do thanks tonight. We look forward to that. But if you just indulge me for, for a moment, I would like to again just say thank you to our justices for your time, uh, for your kind words, for extending all of this really important advice to, to our young colleagues. Uh, and I agree with you, our continent is in good hands. Things are looking bright in that regard. So we are, we are really, really um, happy and, and, and grateful for your time this morning. And then I also want to uh, specifically extend my gratitude to the hardworking team behind the scenes, uh, the men and women of Barbara's team uh, that has been working incredibly hard throughout both the conference and today to make sure that every single word every syllable, every end of sentence became uh, rightfully translated so that we could all enjoy uh, these wonderful presentations yesterday and today's arguments. So a round of applause for, for our hidden men and women in the back. me great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Professor Cooper, the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, to come up to the, to the stage here and give a few remarks. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Co coordinator of the African Mood, Human Rights Mood Court. I suppose I have to bow my head to the justices uh, in case I'm in contact of court. <laughs> <laughs> a, a very warm and good afternoon to everybody here. It is my honor as Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria 
to be at this auspicious final round of the 30th edition of the African Human Rights Mode Court Competition. It is no small feat that this event has over three decades taken place without interruption. Not even COVID could interrupt the event. This continuity has made, was made possible by the dedication of successive organizing teams at the University Center for Human Rights, located in the Faculty of Law, and a succession of partners. And these partners include, of course, partners who come with multiple resources and not only the partners who host uh, the Mootkut competition with us. Together with whom the center organized this event in 19 countries across the continent. I take the opportunity to congratulate our co-host for the 2021 uh, edition of the competition. That is the Faculty of Law, Stellenbosch University, where we are right now, on the celebration of its centenary. That certainly also is no main feat. This faculty counts many legal luminaries among its alumni. We congratulate the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Professor Nicola Smith, all its staff, students, and alumni on this momentous milestone. Please convey my congratulations to my PA, Professor Vim de Villiers, Vice Chancellor and Principal. Our wish is that you would continue to be a beacon of legal education, preparing South African lawyers to uphold the values set out in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, which was passed in 1996. In the spirit of the celebrating landmarks, I also note that the Constitution is celebrating 25 years since it was signed into law by former President Nelson Mandela in Sharpville on 10 December 1996. The year 2021 may have brought its challenges, and there were many across the continent, including in South Africa. But it is also presented us, but it has also presented us with a sense of historical continuity and progress. Dean Smith, it has been and is our pleasure to work with you in this intra-country North-South collaboration. I'm aware that the hosting of this event was not a matter of plain sailing. The format had to be adjusted and the days changed again and again until some people wondered whether it would be the first time it never continued. We congratulate and appreciate the perseverance of the local organizing committee led so professionally by Professor Anika Radman of the Faculty's Department of Public Law. The Moot Court started in 1992 for history's sake as the Southern African Human Rights Moot Court Computation. It was the brainchild of a professor in the UP Center for Human Rights and Faculty of Law. UP, for those who don't know, is the affectionate name for my university, the University of Pretoria. So you learned something today. It, the, it was the brainchild of, of a professor in the UP Center for Human Rights and, fac and Faculty of Law, Christophe Haynes. During this week, his name has no doubt been mentioned a few times, and rightly so. Christophe has, through the African mood, left an indelible footprint on human rights education on the African continent. It was his vision that propelled the mood into being. It was his energy and verve that kept it going for so many years. Working together with colleagues, Johan van der, van der Westhuizen, then the director of the center, professors such as Duart Klein and Nick Rufia, lecturers such as Franz Villion, now a professor and now the center's director, and, and here present with us, and students such as Danny Brandt, now the director of the Free State Center for Human Rights. The idea became a reality. The 1992 launching was memorable. Just listen to this. It was co-hosted with the University of the Western Cape and the University of Zimbabwe. Well, I'm a graduate of that university, so I associate myself with that and took place in Harare, Zimbabwe. It was Christophe's considerable convening power that brought together such luminaries as Dr. Penuel Maduna, who was a student when I was a student there, and Advocate Dula Ama, who both became ministers of justice in the New South Africa. Dr. Zola Squeia, who both became, then director of the legal and constitutional affairs, sorry, 
Department of the African National Congress, and later Minister of Public Service and Administration, and even later Minister of Social Deve Development, and Justice Johan Krichler, then and then Advocate Dihang Moseneke, Professor Johan van der Westfiesen, and the iconic anti-apartheid activist Albi Sachs, all four of whom became justices of the South African Constitutional Court. This, to this should be added, the event was opened by the then Secretary General of the African Organi the, the Organization of African Unity, now the AU, Dr. Salim Ahmed Salim. He's an icon in African history. He described the mood competition as open court, an important and unique contribution towards ensuring that the people of Africa open court independent of the pigment of their skin, do fully enjoy human rights close court, and welcomed open court cross fertilization of ideas close court. In the years that followed, Christophe stayed intimately involved with the African mood, his innovative thinking and zeal for lift shifting boundaries and conceptualizing new grand ideas. So two further moot court, moot court competitions coming into existence and prospered under his guidance. So the first is the Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Moot Court Competition and the National Schools Moot Competition, which was later extended to countries beyond South Africa under the aegis of the Global Campus of Human Rights. The moot, ex the moot, the moot in 1995 expanded is scope beyond the southern part of the continent to become the all African human rights mood competition, the edition you are enjoying today. As it extended its reach over the continent, the African mood created important linkages between the University of Pretoria and other universities on the African continent. We at the University of Pretoria consider ourselves the African Global University. We are of South Africa, but we are family of the African continent. The Center for Human Rights, it served as a basis for many of its subsequent programs and projects and other activities within our beloved continent, Africa. It was pivotal in the center's shift towards adopting a more pan-African and deliberately African-centered focus. Beyond moods, Christophe had a manifold and deeply meaningful career as educator, human rights professional, and United Nations expert. Although his impact was international, his base was at the University of Pretoria. He was director of the center from 1999 to 2006, dean of the faculty of law at the University of Pretoria, 2007 to 2010, and founding co-director of the Institute for International and Comparative Law in Africa, otherwise known as ICLA HUP. He served as United Nations Special Rapporteur on extrajudicial summary or arbitrary executions from 2010 to 2016, and was a member of the Human Rights Committee from 2017 to 2020. As a Special Rapporteur, he drew attention to cutting edge issues such as the use of force by private security providers in the law enforcement context, and the use of drones and autonomous weapons in armed conflict or counter-terrorism operations, and the role of forensic science in protecting the right to life. This internationally renowned human rights lawyer, legal educator, activist, and founding father of the African Human Rights Mood Competition, sadly passed away suddenly and too early in March this year at this very place in Stellenbosch. So it is also significant for that reason that coincidentally the moot is being held at Stellenbosch and at this time. He was spending some time doing research in Stellenbosch, a place he loved to visit and he was hiking in the mountains not far from where we are. So we have spent at Investor of Pretoria a year of very deep mourning and a year of very commemorative events. Christophe would rest well in his grave, knowing that this mood competition continued this year. And as I heard from the justices, from illustrious panelists and competitors, 
would uphold his tradition. We will continue to celebrate Christophe uh, at the Investor of Pretoria going forward. In this memorable year, against this evocative historical background, and at this important occasion in the historical town of Stellenbosch, it's, uh, I think, the first time I come here for a serious event. I normally come here just on holiday. It gives me immense pleasure to honor and play tribute to the legacy of Professor Christoph Haynes and to announce that in memory and recognition of his role as his founding father and sustaining driving force, this mood competition will in future be known as the Christoph Haynes African Human Rights Mood Competition. My remarks end there, but I wish to make a, a second remark uh, in relation to Professor uh, uh, Franz Fillion. It is ostensibly his last year as a director of the center, because you might have seen and wondered when you saw the advert for his post. We hope that he would have a worthy successor. But if he does not have a worthy successor, I might keep him on the job for a little longer. <laughs> and I. I do not know what him and the dean plan uh, in, in for the future for this mood competition, but by the powers vested in me as the vice chancellor and principal, he will continue to be involved. I thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Cooper, for those remarks. And now I hand over to Prof. Yoon to uh, launch the prize giving. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Annika, Professor Radman. Um, I will, however, use this opportunity to say a few words of thanks um, and not necessarily do it all uh, tonight. I think one has to just, at this moment, remember that this competition is not only taking place here, but it had preliminary rounds, and we should thank everyone involved in those rounds, all the participants. I'm thinking about the coaches, the faculty staff members at all the universities, the uh, technical staff making it possible because that was all on Zoom, our new numerous participants in all the languages, the memorial markers, the judges sitting for hours on those rounds. I think that uh, is, a, is a great accomplishment, as I think many said, that COVID could not interrupt that um, uh, mood from taking place, and we thank all of uh, the people involved in that. I want to mention um, one university in particular that is also the first time uh, here, they are here as a francophone team, and we always have this passing parade of mentioning universities that had not been here yet. 175 uh, universities had been here, but Asane Sek University, the Zigan Shore in Seg Senegal, I don't know if you are present here, Asane Sek University, uh, 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 there you go. It is wonderful to us to always at least count newcomers, as it were, after all these years, and thank you for those who made it possible. Um, I, I want to direct my attention to the judges. It is not every day that we actually have the three African Union institutions represented on our bench, a judge of the real African uh, Court on Human and People's right, Rights, although retired for a small while, um, but sitting here in the hypothetical court. So I think that's a bit of a schizophrenic experience for you, Judge Matus, but thank you very much. Uh, the chairperson, as you heard, of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, member of the Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, uh, I, I, I think it is really um, remarkable, and we thank you very much for your presence here. Now, not to single out any member, but since I mentioned his name, I have a public debt to owe to uh, Dr. Darso. Last year, while it was COVID, uh, the center has an annual award that our Human Rights and Democratization in Africa program makes, and that is the Vera Chirwa Award. 
students, participants, you know the case of Ira Chirwa versus Malawi. You would know that she was an activist. She was imprisoned uh, also with her husband and that he died and she continued in a political activism. So she was for us a symbolism of what one should and could be doing with your human rights education, your degree. And uh, therefore we inaugurated this prize. We awarded every year to an alumnus, alumna of the program that makes a remarkable contribution to human rights last year together with uh, uh, Professor Benya Mesmoor, uh, Dr. Dasso was the recipient. He never was able to receive it. And apologies, perhaps, to insert this into this moment, but I think it's so op opportune that we could do it today. So thank you, uh, Dr. Dasso. But I've not forgotten the other two uh, members of the bench. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the other person, I think for us, she's here really because she's a remarkable expert of the African human rights system, working in the French language and forging the alliances between the African, the European and the inter-American system, as you, uh, you know maybe from her work. Uh, Professor Laurence burgor glassen it's always a great pleasure to have you here and thank you so much. And then certainly, last but not the least, uh, Professor Maroncella, who I think for not only us, but every person in Africa knows you and you symbolize that value of independence of this dignified uh, challenge to, to power uh, in a way that is constructive and so meaningful. So thank you so much for uh, adding your stature and your way to this competition and being with us today and saying those lovely words about how I think you find it very touching how um, the, uh, the idea of the youth inspiring us on this Heritage Day really is very, very, um, I think, well understood and appreciated. Thank you so much. I, I will not in detail thank the uh, host for this year, the University of Stellenbosch. I think the, the, the specific individuals will be highlighted tonight, but I cannot, but um, you know, single out Professor Anneke Radman, I think for, for four qualities that I got to know. Um, and that first is that clearly she is a visionary because I think she was the one in 2019, we've heard that story before, right? That she saw this is the way that we should honor 100 years at Stellenbosch, but not looking inward and historically backwards, but looking outwards to the African continent and forwards. So a visionary she is, but she's also a, a poet narrator a uh, potential short story writer and novelist because she is really the author of our, our hypothetical case and as you know it is a very intriguing meandering narrative that draws us all in and uh, we appreciate her for that quality and the third is The third is a, a self-confessed iron fist, a sergeant major personality that she had to make sure uh, through which she had uh, ensured that this uh, competition runs seamlessly. Her team's uh, work has been um, spotless as it were. And then lastly, um, I would also want to say that I think um, the attention to detail, the way that things were just so well thought through one example, just, just look at, at, at the thought that went into this, this bench here, the idea of getting the judges not to wear masks, but having these uh, dividers and, and thinking this through. Uh, you know, I, I just you know, think that that is a good example and the judges would know where we had our, our tea, the deliberation room, he was installed with specific um, furniture and a specific way to, to, to add to the dignified environment that we thought befits our, our judges. So small examples, I can, I can main, name many more, but um, Professor Ratman, it was really an honor, a great honor and a privilege for us, our team, to work with you and your team, but I think you are certainly the person to be singled out. Thank you so much. With gladness, I mention our donors. As Professor Cooper said, you know, the partnership that we had with many uh, is not partnerships only in collaborative work, but also in supportive endeavors. We have the government of Flanders represented by Dr. Raimanans here. Thank you so much for your support and your presence here today. Raoul Wallenberg Institute, 
Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, um, uh, die Baker McKenzie Law Firm, Lexis Nexus, um, at our side at the center, the University of Pretoria, uh, the Global Campus for Human Rights with the European Union support, and the two universities. I think University of Stellenbosch certainly invested greatly in uh, this competition as well as did the University of Pretoria also through the Center for Human Rights. So thank you to all of you. It would not have been possible to bring everyone here to make this this in-person meeting place that we all experienced uh, firsthand. Um, in terms of other members of the team, I think it's the interpreters have been mentioned and Melanie and the team of those who are making this uh, technically also something that we'll be able to refer back to. So the streaming, the live streaming, the recording of this event, I think will also stand us all in good stead in, in many years to come. For me personally at the center, it's very difficult to even start singling out. But again, there's one person that I think is the giant I think we all know. Sayat from our side has been the giant of the MOOD organization for many years. All of you, I'm sure, had some form of personal in interaction with him over time. And he's always unflappable uh, at, your, at your behest and uh, doing things in his, in his very professional way. He was supported by Mati with the social media and others. The center always really functions as a, as a team. So, you know, I should say the whole team, because if there is an event, there is media, there's communications, there's your London, some Pway, there's a website, there is a Carol who helps to make sure that things are organized well. She came here in a bucky uh, loaded with all our banners to ensure that we also don't pay a lot of, uh, you know, um, overweight for our transportation. And she's always been at our, our side on the web. Uh, in, in the moods. We have um, Jacko, uh, who is the auditor that you know will also now come to announce the results together with Sam and Emily and Elaine and many others. And there's Sydney, Sydney that helps us with the with the banners, I think the, from our side, the attention to detail is also, I think, in the banners. If you thought about the mood, you see the banners, suddenly they're all there, right? One up to 30, and then there's another venue, and the banners are there. And I'm asking myself, as we adjust for the future, COVID has taught us to adjust. Will we perhaps, when it's the mood is at 60, will we bring all 60 banners to the mood? <laughs> and how will we manage with that? So anyway, maybe um, I will not perhaps be there at the time. Although I was, as you know, for a year for 29 of these 30 moods, um, my privilege to have been here. In terms of the longer term, I think I, you know, just very briefly in terms of the 30 years to, to thank um, Professor Coupe also for um, being here and uh, making um, us remember Christoph Heinz and his role. It's for all of us a source of constant inspiration, um, but also um, lingering sadness that, that Christoph is here through his, his works, but is also not here because you know, of, of his absence. Um, I think of all the many Mood Court organizers over the years that have um, made the Mood Court possible, and the one name I mentioned uh, at the opening, but I'll mention again, is that of Norman Taku, who's been the Mood Court organizer for many years, and many, many other staff members, too many to to mention. So the MOOT is an institution, and an institution has to make sure that it keeps going. Uh, so we are already thinking of what happens next year. So I am happy to announce, and I'm asking my colleagues who will be responsible for the MOOT hosting next year to come to the front and just say one or two sentences to concretize this. But the MOOT will be held uh, from 25 to 30 July all things being equal, um, uh, we have to say, I think, in these days, in Cairo with the British University in Egypt. So thank you so much. And our partners. Ah, thank you, Francis. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Leila Taufi. Uh, on behalf of the British University in Egypt, we are so excited to host uh, the Moot Court next year. And... Um, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, I just want to apologize that for, for me personally that I'm not that uh, sociable person, so I'm not networking that well. <laughs> but I will try my best in, in Cairo to not to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just would like to 
thank you for giving us this opportunity to host this extraordinary competition. It's really extraordinary compared to any other competition. Uh, we will do our best to uh, make you feel home at Cairo in Cairo. So uh, prepare for next year. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We all look forward to that. So that's the classical Cape to Cairo. We were in Cairo in 2002. So I see a 20 years celebration of being back in Cairo. So we always look at the numbers and what they mean to us. So let's get to the serious business of the results and the prizes and um, move ahead. So in the preliminary rounds is where your memorials were used. So as we know, in these semi-final rounds and final rounds, the memorial does not count, but we did mark the memorials. And I'm going to announce the languages and the best memorial prize and I'll ask one of our guests to please hand that plaque to the team which I hope is represented here. So first of all we have the Portuguese best memorial prize which goes to Universidade Eduardo Mondlane and I ask Dr. Raimenantz to please hand over the prize to one representative from Eduardo Mondlane. There's two. There's two plugs. <laughs> Sorry, two representatives. The memorial for the equipe francophone. J'annonce le. The memorial for the francophone team uh, goes. The prize uh, goes to the francophone virtual university of Senegal. There's no, there's no prize for the runners-up. I'm announcing the runners-up, but the winners, regrettably, will be the only ones to re receive a prize, which is Le Gagnant son l'Université Félix Ophot Bonnier. Uh, University of Félix Ophot Bonnier of uh, Cocody, Côte d'Ivoire, best memorial. And I ask Professor Coupe, if you would please um, uh, hand out these uh, plaques to the two students, please, Professor Coupe. Thank you so much. Then in the Anglophone, the English speaking teams, we had a third placed University Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology which did not proceed to the, to the top 10 or the top 8, but we mentioned them, they were third placed. And so also the second place did not uh, appear here. It was the University of Pretoria, second place in the memorials. And the winner of the memorials for the English language rounds uh, is the Africa Nazarene University. <laughs> and I ask uh, Professor Smith, uh, the Dean of the Faculty, um, Stellenbosch University Faculty of Law, to hand over that prize for us, please. So we come to the best oralists, and to emphasize this was during the preliminary rounds. For the Portuguese teams, the best oralists in the preliminary rounds is Senora Idanes Pesuro of Eduardo Mondlane. And I ask uh, uh, Justice Matus to hand over the prize. Justice Matus, please. For the francophone team, the best oralist, I will announce the second and third. Uh, of course, uh, the prize will go to the winner. So, in third position, Ngesan Kwame from the University Felix of Fort Moyer. 
the second place goes to Sela Shekna from the University Institute, Academic Institute of Abidjan. And uh, the second oralist for the Francophones is Natalie He Koulibaly from uh, University Felix of Fouet-Boigny of Cocody. And I'd like to demand, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Professor Laurence to uh, hand over the prize. And the um, Anglophone, the Angli English speaking best oralist, I will ask uh, Dr. Nanima to hand over the prize. And I will announce once again the top three, but the prize will be um, handed to the winner um, only. In the third position for the preliminary rounds in the Anglophone um, part of the competition was Kappa Zinguzi Mwenyogere from Makerere University. And my apologies for butchering the name, but are you here? Makarere University. Then in the second position was Lazola Nomkala, University of the Western Cape. But she's not here. And in the first position during the preliminary rounds was Dorcas Amionu from University of Ghana. So congratulations to everyone who participated and to those individuals um, specifically. We will now ask um, the runner-up prize to be handed by uh, Dr. Darso and the winner's prize by Professor Madoncella. And uh, neither myself nor the judges know who the winners are because it is calculated according to the competition rules by looking at the scores, discarding the highest and the lowest, and then arriving at a winner. And therefore, I ask our auditor, Mr. Jaco Guillermo, to announce to us who actually the winner is. Thank you, Jaco. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, when you have a competition with two teams, somebody has to, uh, to lose, and uh, the winner is the applicant, and the runner-up is the respondent. Okay, so thank you, thank you so much. I, I, I think the joy will even be greater. You know, we're always looking for a fitting uh, uh, gift to give to the teams that win, and sometimes it's a visit to a, an institution to do an internship that is problematic these days. So the winning team, in addition to the very glamorous and important plaque, you also get each a laptop, and for the runners up, an iPad. So that is the slight difference between the two groups. So let me ask, let me ask Dr. Darso, please then to uh, hand over the plaques and the presents, the bags to the runner-ups, runners up. <laughs> Just stand so we can do a photo. Yeah. Uh, take your bag, your little bag, with a, and it has a very trendy Stalys uh, 
T-shirt and, and then sweatshirt and goodie, hoodie, hoodie um, as well inside that. Uh, <laughs> so we'd like you to wear those maybe later on today. So um, <laughs> Professor Madoncella will then come to the front and hand the prize to the winning team members. Please, winning team members, please step forward. Fantastic and congratulations One, once again. I think it was really, from my point of view, an excellent final round. I think we heard incisive questioning, good, excellent argumentation and responses. So congratulations to both teams. It's always unfortunate that there has to be a winner, but also the life. I'll ask Professor Radman maybe to speak the last word for the moment. And indeed, a very short word it will be. Um, for me, all that remains is to conclude this proceedings by uh, offering you to follow our uh, student assistants downstairs. We have set up a nice lunch for you. Uh, there is even a waffle station, I've been told. Uh, we need to celebrate our, all our winners and our Heritage Day, and I think we are so fortunate to actually be able to do that together. So please join us downstairs. It's sunny outside, and let's continue these celebrations. Tonight, you're also invited to the gala dinner uh, that we will host at the uh, hotel where we've been spending this week, uh, where we will also proceed to hand out all the certificates to the participants. Uh, but please feel welcome uh, to come and join us downstairs. Thank you. Thank you.